This year, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, with the support of their partners at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, will launch the JPSS-1 satellite, the first operational satellite in NOAA's next-generation polar orbiting satellite system. Join us for a front row seat to this launch as we take you inside the JPSS-1 satellite. The launch of Sputnik in 1957 sparked a scramble for spaceflight superiority between the former Soviet Union and the United States. The fierce competition led to the launch of the nation's first satellites and provided the world with the first view of Earth from outer space. It did not take long for scientists to realize the true potential of this new perspective. With never-before-seen global environmental data now flowing, meteorologists went to work on forming the world's first numerical weather predictions. Today, the legacy of these satellites continues with JPSS-1. With an ever-growing need for environmental data, the United States relies on NOAA's Joint Polar Satellite System, or JPSS. This system provides the next significant technological and scientific advancement in observations gathered from a polar orbit. The images seen here were captured by NOAA's current polar orbiter, the NOAA-NASA Suomi MPP satellite. Launched in 2011, Suomi MPP began as a research satellite and has served as the predecessor and blueprint to the JPSS series. Carrying the same highly advanced instruments, Suomi MPP has revolutionized forecasters' ability to make long-range forecasts and track long-duration climate fluctuations. Still in orbit, it continues to forge a path for the JPSS program. NOAA's polar orbiting satellites travel 512 miles above the Earth moving as fast as 17,000 miles per hour. Like its predecessors, JPSS-1 will circle the Earth from pole to pole, crossing the equator 14 times daily. Flying just 50 minutes ahead of Suomi MPP, JPSS-1 will cover the entire globe twice a day and gather vital scientific data about the land, oceans, and atmosphere below. NOAA relies on its national and international partners to cover other important polar orbits. All of the information collected is poured into the National Weather Service's numerical weather prediction models, enabling the accurate three to seven day weather forecasts we have come to rely on. This video shows how the JPSS missions will orbit in conjunction with other NOAA, NASA, international and U.S. military programs. Polar orbiting satellites work by collecting what are called swaths. As you see in this video, the satellite's advanced sounders and imagers will collect data below as they travel around the globe on a precise path. In near real time, this information is combined with other satellites and stitched together to create a full global picture. This coverage is vital in remote areas where we may not have land or ocean-based sensors. JPSS-1's orbit gives it a unique vantage point from which to observe Alaska and the Arctic, a view unmatched by other satellites or ground sensors. It will serve as the single most important source of meteorological data for these regions. These images highlight just a few of the different environmental activities the satellite can monitor in these areas, including auroras and nighttime lights, wildfire devastation, shifts in Arctic sea ice, volcanic eruptions, and smoke movement from active wildfires. Every time you check your phone or TV for your local weather, you're getting a forecast that relies on information provided by three of JPSS's state-of-the-art instruments. The Advanced Technology Microwave Sounder, the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite and the Cross-Track Infrared Sounder are critical for weather forecasters at NOAA's National Weather Service. In fact, 85% of the data feeding today's weather forecast models come from polar orbiting satellites like JPSS-1. 
The ATMS instrument is JPSS-1's next-generation cross-track microwave sounder, providing information about the physical properties of our atmosphere, such as temperature and moisture. ATMS is particularly valuable for forecasters because it allows them to see inside and below clouds, and it can be used to produce images inside dangerous storms. The instrument also provides measurements of rainfall rates and snow and ice information, which are crucial for weather-dependent decisions like school and work closures. The CRIS instrument aboard JPSS-1 will be the most advanced infrared sounder ever placed in orbit. With over 2,200 channels, each observing a different layer of the atmosphere, CRIS provides meteorological data in greater detail than ever before. These animations show just some of the many environmental variables measured by CRIS. The VIRS instrument collects visible and infrared imagery of Earth's land, atmosphere, cryosphere, and oceans, and produces a vast array of unique environmental observations. Some of our most stunning images of Earth from space, like the ones you see here, are produced by the VIRS instrument currently being flown on Suomi MPP. On September 20th, 2017, the VIRS instrument aboard Suomi MPP followed Hurricane Maria as it made landfall over Puerto Rico and the surrounding region. A strong Category 4 hurricane, Maria devastated the island and left millions without electricity. These images were captured using VIRS' highly sensitive day-night band. The image at the top of the screen was taken on July 24th, approximately two months before the storm made landfall. It shows the vibrant nighttime lights of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The bottom image, captured immediately following the hurricane, reveals vast regions of darkness where power had yet to be restored. The seemingly endless data provided by CRIS, ATMS, and VIRS are essential for the National Weather Service and daily weather forecasting. JPSS also features two other advanced instruments designed to measure important aspects of our changing environment. They are the clouds and the Earth's radiant energy system and the ozone mapping and profiler suite. The OMPS instrument monitors the health of the planet's ozone layer and continues a crucial global data stream produced by current ozone monitoring systems. These measurements of changing ozone throughout Earth's atmosphere are key to issuing important air quality warnings and creating the National Weather Service's UV indexes, which help keep you safe and sunburn-free at the beach. JPSS-1 series system is essential to understanding the amount of heat and energy radiating to and from Earth. Ceres will help scientists better understand how energy coming to and from the planet is affected by the land, clouds, and atmosphere. While each instrument alone is an incredibly powerful tool for environmental observation, the five instruments aboard JPSS-1 are designed to work in tandem to provide a much more complete picture of environmental phenomena. Before these instruments can be utilized, JPSS-1 had to be designed, built, and now sent to space. Taking JPSS-1 from its initial concept to launch was a highly coordinated, collaborative effort. NOAA and its partners at NASA, Ball Aerospace, United Launch Alliance, the Harris Corporation, Northrop Grumman, and Raytheon have worked tirelessly on JPSS-1's construction and launch. This time-lapse video shows the intricate process of preparing the satellite for its 1,200-mile journey from its cargo bay at Ball Aerospace in Boulder, Colorado, to California's Vandenberg Air Force Base, where it will leave the planet. JPSS-1 will make its voyage to space aboard a United Launch Alliance Delta II rocket. The rocket stands a staggering 128 feet tall and features two stages, or engines, that will boost it into orbit. It will also use nine additional solid rocket motors to help it leave Earth's gravity. 
The Delta II rocket will use a 10-foot diameter payload fairing to surround and protect JPSS-1 as it travels to space. When the terminal countdown hits zero, the Delta II's main engines will light, lifting the rocket off the pad, and JPSS-1 will begin its journey to space. Within two minutes of leaving the launch pad, the solid rocket boosters will complete their burns and all nine will be jettisoned into space. Meanwhile, the Delta II first stage will continue to push the satellite into orbit. Rocketing through the atmosphere for approximately another two minutes, the main engine will cut off and separate from the rocket's upper stages. The stage two engine will immediately fire and continue to push to polar orbit. After roughly four and a half minutes of total flight time, the payload fairings will open, exposing the JPSS-1 satellite to space. For nearly an hour, the second stage will burn before it cuts off and separates. At this point, JPSS-1 will be flying alone in outer space for the first time. Scientists will now begin to wake up JPSS-1, now deemed NOAA-20 by deploying its solar array and navigational systems. In the days to follow, the JPSS team will prepare the satellite and its instruments. JPSS-1 is an incredible machine. We are excited that you can join us as we see it off on its mission to continue a legacy of vital contributions to United States weather forecasting.